Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original. All you boys and girls who are listening ought to send in for one of those flashlights that Lum and Abner are sending out to all users of Horlicks malted milk. Just think what a lot of fun you could have with this flashlight. I know that Dad and Mother will be glad to send in for one for you. To get one of these shiny aluminum flashlights, complete with bulb and batteries, here's all you have to do. Send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Remember now, boys and girls, must be a wrapper from a package, any size package, of Horlicks malted milk powder. You can't use wrappers from packages of Horlicks tablets. Well, write your name and address on the back of that wrapper and send it, along with 10 cents, to pay for packing and mailing your flashlight to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. You got that? Then, Lum and Abner will send you one of these handsome and powerful flashlights, complete with bulb and battery. Ask Dad and Mother to send in for your flashlight right away, tonight, before they forget it. You can get Horlick's malted milk powder, either natural or chocolate flavor, at your druggist, if you don't already have a package in the house. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Lum conceived the idea of having Abner pretend that he'd been in an automobile accident to gain his wife's sympathy and get him back in good graces at home, little did he realize that he would have to do the work for both of them at the office. <laughs> so as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find the old fellows down at the empty store building. Lum is busy going through today's mail while Abner looks on. Listen. Wish I could help you there, Lum, but I can't do nothing with these arms in a sling this way. Yeah, of all the things we could have thought of to have wrong with you, we had to make out like your arms was broke. Yeah. I've got to do all the work, and you just sit around and take things easy. Well, now, it was your idea. You was the one that had the idea for me to make out like I'd been hit by an automobile. Yeah, well, if I'd have known I was going to have to wait on your hand and foot, I never would have thought of it, neither. Yeah, well, there ain't no use to argue about it now. We... Done told Elizabeth that they broke and we got to keep on making out like that. Yeah. If she ever was to find out that we just made that story up, why, well, ain't no telling what she would do. About whip us both, that's about what she do. Yeah, m- maybe you better keep your arms in a sling for a while yet, anyway. Yeah, sure. See, I just figured at the time, if we made out like you were serious hurt, Elizabeth would get to feeling so sorrowful for you, she'd make up with you. Well, and... she did. She did. It worked all right. Yeah, I know, but I never stopped to think that it'd take three or four weeks for your arms to get well. No. <laughs> well, I never need her. <laughs> she'd be mad enough to bite if she knowed we'd been fooling her, wouldn't oh, she? Oh, <laughs> me. Well, of course, she'd be mad over that all right. But if she know that she'd been waiting on me, feeding me and all that, and me just laying up there in bed when there weren't nothing wrong with me, <laughs> She'd just about pull that house down right on top of it. <laughs> well, I can tend to the matrimonial business and sending out these flashlights all right, but I, Granny's, I want you to have them bandages off of your arms there by the time we get the store opened up. I ain't going to wait on all the customers by myself. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I was just thinking last night, Mom, if they don't get well by the time we open up the store, well, uh, uh, maybe I could just be the president, and all I'd have to do is just sit around and sort of boss things. Be the president. Yeah, I, I, I could be the president of a new store, you know, even if my arms were still broke. Abner, have we got to have another argument about who's going to be the president? Well, no, I don't know that we have to have an argument. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. All we got to do is just decide right now that I'm going to be it, and then we get ready to open up for business, why, it'll all be settled. Mm-hmm. You've got it all figured out, have you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought that up over at the house last night. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you better go on back over to your house and do some more thinking, for you ain't got it right yet. I ain't. I've always been president of the Jotham Down store, and I aim to keep on being. Yeah, well, uh, Lom, that's just the reason that I'm going to be at this time, too, because you've always been here. What do you know about being president? Nothing. How much experience have you had? None. Who's the best qualified for the office? I am. Well, here, wait a minute. If you're going to ask the questions and give the answers both, well, I ain't got a chance. That ain't no way to have an argument. I ain't trying to have no argument. I'm just telling you so you won't be disappointed. You may as well get that idea out of your head right now. I'll be the president. Yeah. You may be the president, but I ain't going to get the idea out of my head. I'll tell you that right now. I guess I got all the say-so about that. Yeah. Best thing to do is just let it go for right now. 
When the time comes, I know you'll see the light. See the light? Yeah, you'll have time to think it over careful and forget oh. yourself and think of the good of the jot them down store. Yeah. Well, I went through all this mail here now. We've got 256 letters here wanting flashlights. 256? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've just been waiting till you got all through sorting them off. <laughs> waiting? Get busy eating them. <laughs> eating them? Yes, sir, you said yes to it. You'd eat every letter that them friends of mine sent in. I want to see you do it. <laughs> well, here, it ain't no way of telling whether these letters come from that announcement you made yesterday or the one I made the day before. Huh? I ain't going to eat them unless they say on there that they wrote in because they hear you talking on the party line. Oh, just backing out on your word, huh? I know. I ain't a backing out. I knowed you wouldn't get no letters, Abner. That speech you give yesterday more than likely kept more folks from riding in than anything else. Backing out. That's what you're doing. Just backing out. Why, they never even mentioned your name in the letters. Not one of them. Or did they say they heard your announcement? Well, no. They never come right out and said so. But yeah. I know in reason that's how some of them to write in. Yeah, and that's what you'd claim it. Now, I wish they'd have put on that what you now hear if I wouldn't make you eat a flock of them, my name ain't Peabody. You think all these folks wrote in just because they heard your announcement on the party line? Yes, sir. Uh, most of them. Uh, sworn to goodness, Abner. You sure got a good opinion of yourself, I'll say that. Here you're tell of it, you ought to make all announcements. Well, that ain't a bad idea. We get a heap more orders for them flashlights, I'll say that. All right. If, if you think you're so smart, I'll tell you what I'll do. Just to show you which one of us is the best at out loud talking. What's that? Well, you was complaining about wanting to be president in the Jotham Down store when we get it opened up. Oh, you going to let me be it? No, 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 wait a minute now. We'll just leave it up to our friends to see who's going to be it. Our friends? Yes, sir. Just let them decide which one of us ought to be president. Just make an announcement over the party line and tell them when they send in a ropper for one of these flashlights just to write on the back of it which one of us they want to be president. Oh. If they want you, why, they can write Abner. Yeah. If they want me, they write Lum across. And then we'll let each one of them roppers count as a vote. And the one of us that gets the most of them is elected to the office. Well, that's fair. Why, of course it's fair. Yeah, it's just fair enough. I'll just take you up on that well, proposition. Fine. <laughs> All right, I'll just uh, make an announcement over the party line right now, then. Tell everybody about it. Well, here, wait a minute. How about me making an announcement? Well... Well, all right. We'll both make it. Then. Yeah. I'll get them on the party line. Yeah, I, I want to be sure and remind them to vote for me. <laughs> now, wait a minute. We ain't going to have none of that going on, Abner. We'll just explain it to them and let them decide themselves which one of us they want to vote for. Ain't going to have no mudslinging in this campaign. Huh? I say, we ain't going to have no mudslinging. Ain't going to throw mud at one another. Well, whatever give you the idea, I want to throw mud on you anyway. For goodness sake, come I on. never said nothing about throwing mud on me. I said we're not going to throw mud at one another. Well, how are we going to throw it at one another without getting some of it on us? We ain't going to miss every time. I, I know that. I can throw straight. I ain't talking about real mud, Abner. Well, I never seen no other kind. Mud's mud to me. What I mean, Abner, we don't... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Folks, he's listening. Oh. Don't get in here arguing about it. No, no. Hello? This is uh, Lum Edwards talking. And Abner Peabody. I uh, just wanted to tell all you folks out there on the party line that uh, me and Abner is having a sort of a contest to see which one of us is going to be president of the Jotham Down store when we get it opened up. Yeah, vote for me. Wait a minute, Abner. Uh -huh. When you send in for one of these flashlights we're giving away, be sure and write on the back of the ropper which one of us you want for president. Yeah, me. If you want me, why, write Lum. And if you want Abner, write, uh, well, write Abner. But if you want me, write Lum. Peabody for president. Vote for Abel Abner. I recollect, we're leaving it up to you folks out on the party line to decide which one of us gets the office. We just leave it to your good judgment to see that I get elected. And don't forget that I got both arms broke. I'm pitiful. Goodbye. <laughs> well, for goodness sake, Abner. Uh huh? Peel into their sympathies. If I catch you pulling a stunt like that again, I'll fix you to where you can call them up and tell them you got your neck broke, too. Well, I, I just want to get all the votes that I could. Yeah, you store into them when you've done it, too. Huh? Your arms ain't broke, and you know it. Why, they... Oh, no. That's, that's right. I forgot about that. If you're going to start running things that way, I'll get out here and get me a campaign slogan and go into this thing right. Well, I just thought we want to get all the votes we could for it. That's all right. I'm going to get out tomorrow and stump speech the county. And I'll that's get out and stump speech the county, too, then. That's just well, what I'll do. be a good campaign slogan. Let's see. Abel Abner, the people's fearless protector. I don't get it. No, that's what I'll do. That's my old constable. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's our rain. Huh? <laughs> I bet if somebody calling up right now telling me they're going to vote for me. <laughs> yeah, but it, I'll cut them wires. Hello? Uh, uh, huh? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's here. Uh, just a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Later, Bear. It's your woman, Abner. Oh. Uh, uh, you'll have to hold a receiver up to my ear now. Oh, for goodness sake. Hello? Oh, I'm feeling all right. You done what? Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't have did that, Elizabeth. Yeah, but I just wouldn't have did it. Oh, my goodness. My What's goodness, the matter? My What's goodness. the matter? Why, Elizabeth has found that accident policy of mine over at the house, Lum, and she's put in a claim for me having both my arms broke. Oh, well, tell her not to do that, Abner. Tell her that your arms ain't broke. Oh, tell her yeah. the truth about it. They can get you for obtaining money under false pretense. Yeah, but Elizabeth will get me for something a whole lot worse than that if she finds out that my arms don't have broke. Well, Ebner will be pitiful if his wife finds out that that accident was a fake. And it looks, too, as if there's a difference of opinion between Lum and Abner as to which one of them is best qualified to be president of the Jotham Down store. I'll bet Abner has a lot more friends than Lum thinks he has. Cast your vote in this contest. And at the same time, get one of these handy little pocket-sized flashlights, complete with bulb and battery. It's a really useful article, folks. A 75-cent value, for that's what it would cost you if you bought it in a store. But all you have to do is send in the wrapper from any size package of Horlick's malted milk powder. Must be Horlick's malted milk powder. Wrappers from packages of Horlick's tablets are not eligible. Write your name and address on the back of this wrapper and mail it, enclosing 10 cents to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight, to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. And send in your request right away, folks. Do it tonight. Lum and Abner want to hear from their friends as soon as possible. This is Carlton Brickard, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.